Hello everyone, Alex here from warnoffkeys.com and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create an unmute command and this is a continuation of the previous video where I show you how to create a mute command using MongoDB. A link to that video will be found in the video description or at the top right of your screen right now. And real quick before we start, if you do need help with anything then feel free to ask in the Warnoff Keys Discord server. We have a growing community here, a bunch of people joining every day. And I'm sure someone will be able to answer your question if you were to post it in here. So real quick, I want to mention that I made a mistake in the last video. Whenever we're setting the expires date, duration is sometimes not going to be a number. The reason for that is that I was using previous mutes, which is an object or an array more specifically, and this is going to be the return from the database. So if you followed the previous video, you want to make sure that you want to use previous mutes.length, which is going to be how many elements there are in that array, rather than the array itself. So if you ran into any errors when remuting people, this is why, and this is how you fix it. So with that said, let's get started. I'm going to be using the commando framework. A link to a video on how to use the commando framework can be found in the video description. Also, if you want access to the GitHub repository, so you can code along with me with my exact project, a link to that will also be found in the video description. So I'm going to go inside of my commands folder, and I'm going to go inside of moderation. Here we see kick and mute. I'm going to make a new file called unmute.js. The first thing we have to do is import commando. So I'm going to say const commando with a capital C because this is a class. And this is going to equal require discord.js dash commando. Now we're going to export a class. So I can say module.exports. This is going to be a class called unmute command. And this class is going to extend or inherit all the functionality that commando provides. So we can say extends commando.command, which is the exact name of the class you want. We then want a constructor function. This is going to have a client. And within here, we have to call the constructor function for the command class. In order to do that, you have to call the super method. This takes in two arguments. The first one is the client that we have access to. The second one is an object with some different options we can pass in. So the first option is going to be the name of the command. So let's say name is unmute. The group is going to be moderation because we are inside the moderation folder. The member name will also be unmute. We can have user permissions, which is going to be an array of strings. And within here, you can add in whatever permission nodes you want to make sure that whoever is running this command has the ability to run this command. So for simplicity, I'm only going to make it so administrators can run this command. And then I'm going to add in a description, which you can type in anything here. I'm just going to say unmutes a user. Now we need a run function. So I'm going to say run. This has to be an asynchronous function. And within the arguments here, we have to gain access to a message. We also want access to arguments. The way this command is going to work is that someone can run exclamation point unmute and the user's at, or they can run unmute and the user's ID. So we want to check for both the use cases and then unmute the user once we have enough information. The reason why we want this is so you can unmute someone in a public channel and that's fine, or you can right click and copy the user's ID and unmute someone in a private channel such as a staff channel where you might want to unmute someone without other people knowing. So we're going to cover both use cases very simply here. The first thing we want to do is make sure that there's the correct number of arguments. Now by default, args right here is going to be an entire string. It is going to be something where if I were to write unmute and then some random ID, this is going to be a string. Rather, I want this to be an array. So instead of there being a string like this, I want this to be an array with this number inside of there. In order to do that with commando, we have to add in another option within this argument. We can say arg types or arg type rather is going to be multiple. This is going to make it so arguments is going to become an array rather than just a string. We can now check the length of the array. So I could say if args.length is not exactly equal to one, we then want to complain to the user. So I could say message.reply. We'll then say please use the correct syntax. That will be exclamation point mute and then target users at or their ID. Now, if you watched the previous video, you know that we don't just want to assume that they're going to be using an exclamation point within the correct syntax, and that we want to actually provide the command prefix for the server that we are in. So I'm going to take this entire string and I'm going to cut it out, and I'm going to replace a single quote with template literals, and I'm going to paste back in the string. That way we can insert in the command prefix right here. But how do we gain access to the command prefix? Well, the message here is not a standard message. If you watched the previous video, you know that this is going to be something that Commando adds additional properties to, and also the guild property of the message is not a typical guild object either. 
In a similar fashion, Commando is going to add in additional properties to that, such as the command prefix property. So first we want to gain access to the guild. So we're going to destructure that property from the message object. And then we are going to replace this exclamation point with an inserted value of guild.command prefix. Now, after we're replying, we want to make sure that we return so we don't continue with our code execution. And now we know that we have at least one argument. Now the goal is to get the mentioned user or get the ID. So we can access all mentions with message.mentions. So I can say const target equals message.mentions. This object is going to give us access to all the mentioned channels and users, and we can access the user specifically with the user's property. And then we can say dot first, which will return the first user that was mentioned. Now, if there were no users mentioned, we are going to then have a null value returned. And so we can use an if statement to see if target actually exists. So if not target, in this case, we can assume that this is going to be a user ID. So I'm going to create a variable here and not a constant. This is going to be called ID and I'm going to set this equal to an empty string. Now within here, I can say ID equals args index zero. The reason for that is that we didn't mention someone. And so we might be providing a valid ID here. Now argument is going to be an actual array, which is why we have to access the first element or index zero. And so now at this point, we either have the target that actually exists or the actual ID. Now, one thing I want to do here is I actually want to change this if statement. I'm wanting to say if target exists. And so with that said, I'm wanting to take this code here and cut it out. I made a simple mistake here. We're wanting to add in an else statement. So if target exists, we then want to say ID equals target dot ID. Otherwise ID is going to be the first argument or index zero. So either way, whether we mentioned someone or we provided the actual string of the user ID, we now have the user ID. So at this stage, we have to import our schema. So if you watched the previous video, you know that we created something called a mute schema, which is going to have different information, such as the user ID, the guild ID, why they were muted, who muted them, and things like that. So we need to import this file so we have access to the schema so we can then connect to Mongo and actually retrieve the data from the mute. So I'm going to say const mute schema equals require at schemas forward slash mute dash schema. Now, the reason why I'm using this at symbol here instead of the typical dot dot slash is because I'm using something called module aliases. A video on how to use module aliases can be found on my channel. And if you don't want to install that, you can use the typical relative path. So we can go and access schemas folder and then access the mute schema or wherever your file might be located. But because I do have access to module aliases, I'm going to opt into using that. So now we're wanting to update all the documents within our collection that is going to contain the correct guild ID for the guild that we're currently in. That's going to contain the correct user ID that was previously mentioned and it's going to contain current equals true. So if you've watched the previous video, you know that current is going to be a Boolean. This is going to represent if this mute is currently active or if it has expired. So current equals true means that that user is actively muted. And so we're wanting to actually update this document to update current to be false if it is true for the exact use case we want. So going back to our unmute command, we can say const result equals await mute schema dot update one. This is going to take in two different objects. The first one is going to be the criteria or the filter to actually find the document. And the second object is going to be what we actually want to update. So in this first one, we want to provide three pieces of information. The first property will be the guild that we're currently in. So we can say guild ID, which is the exact name of the property that we see right here. And we're also in the user ID and current. So keep those in mind. So guild ID is going to be guild.id because we already destructured guild from this line right here in line 22. We also want the user ID, which is going to be ID, which is the value that's populated within these if statements. And then we want current is true to make sure that this mute is going to be active. So now if we do find something like this, we want to update this. And what do we want to update it to? We simply want to set current to false. So we can say current is false. And then I'm going to add in a console log here that says results. And we're going to console log the result that is returned. So I'm going to save this. Now I'm going to start my bot with node index.js. And going into Discord, I could then run exclamation point unmute. If I do that, it's going to say, please use the correct syntax, exclamation point unmute test. And then we're going to get this result right here. So it's going to assume that test is the actual user ID and it doesn't know better at this point. However, if we take a look at this result object, we see in, which is the number of actual documents. And then we see in modified, which is the number of documents that were actually modified. So we can take a look at in modified to see if this actually updated anything. 
Now, currently the tutorial bot is not muted, so I can go ahead and mute them with the previous mute command, which is exclamation point underscore mute at tutorial, and we'll say spamming. And now we see that the tutorial bot has been muted for spamming. If I click on it, we see that it is currently muted. If I run exclamation point unmute at tutorial, we then see that the number of results that was found is one that matched our criteria, and the number of results that was modified is one right here. So we can use in modified to see if something actually happened. So if I click on tutorial, we see that they're still muted because we haven't actually removed their role. But going back into Mongo, if I click on find, we now see that both the currents are false. So one of these was a previous mute from the actual mute tutorial, and another one was from when I just muted them just now. But we see current is false on both of them, and that means that this actually updated that document. So going back, I can now say if result dot in modified is exactly equal to one. Now, the reason why we're only checking for one is because we are calling update one. And so there's always only going to be either zero or one returned. And so we can check against one to see if this was successful. If this was the case, we can then say to do remove the muted role. And for now, I'm just going to reply back saying that they were unmuted. So message dot reply. I'm going to need to template literal here. And I'm going to say you unmuted. And then I'm going to tag the user, less than symbol, at symbol, greater than symbol. And then in between the at symbol and the greater than symbol, I can insert in the user's ID. So you unmuted that user. And then otherwise, we're going to message dot reply saying that user is not muted. So now we can get rid of this console log because we know that this is going to work. And now we want to gain access to the actual muted role. So we have access to the guild. And so with that, we can gain access to the muted role in a similar way we did in the previous video. So I'm going to say const muted role equals guild dot roles dot cache dot find. And dot find is going to have a callback that will be ran for every single role it finds within the cache. So this callback is going to be a function where the first and only argument is going to be role. And then we're going to return true or false depending on if this is the role we're looking for. And as soon as we return true, we're going to stop calling this callback for every single role and we're going to immediately return that role into the muted role right here. So with that said, we just have to say return role.name is exactly equal to muted, and then we have access to the muted role. So we can say if muted role, so that means we actually found it, we can then gain access to the guild member. And one thing to keep in mind is that users, which is what we have access to here, as specified right here with the users, is different than a guild member. A user is something that is going to contain generic Discord information about the user's account, where a guild member is going to contain that same information, but additional contents about different properties for the relationship with that current guild, such as their nickname, when they join the guild, and other things like that. So we cannot use a target here for multiple reasons. One is that it might not even exist if the command sender used an ID, but also we need access to a guild member specifically. So scrolling down, I can say const guild member equals guild dot members dot cache dot get we can pass in the id at this point we can say guild member dot roles dot remove we can pass in the muted role and then the muted role will actually be removed from the user so i'm going to save this and i'm going to run the bot again i am then going to remute our tutorial because currently it won't say that they're muted so if i do unmute at tutorial it will then say that user is not muted even though they have the muted role the reason for that is because it's not stored in the database so I have to remute this user. So mute at tutorial spamming. It'll then say you muted the tutorial for spamming. And currently they do have the muted role, of course. And if I were to do unmute at tutorial, it will then say you unmute tutorial. If I click on it, the muted role is no longer there. So this is how you're going to create an unmute command using the same mute command system I covered in the previous video. Thanks for watching this Discord JS tutorial. If you want to learn more about Discord JS, consider clicking on the playlist you see on your screen now. If you need help, feel free to leave a comment or ask in the Warnoff Keys Discord, which can be found in the video description.